Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every non-empty subset of positive integers has a smallest element. Now, this is often referred to as the well-ordering principle. And to prove it, we are going to use the principle of mathematical induction, which tells us the following. Let S be a subset of the positive integers, and suppose 1 is an element of S, and for all positive integers n, if n is an element of S, then n plus 1 is an element of S. Then S is equal to the set of positive integers. Now some other facts we know about the integers is that 1 is the smallest positive integer, and given any two integers a and b, a is greater than b if and only if a is greater than or equal to b plus 1. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, let's first give ourselves an arbitrary, non-empty subset of positive integers. I'll call it b. And the whole goal is to show that b has a smallest element. In other words, we want to show that there exists an element d in b, such that for all c in b, c is greater than or equal to d. And to prove that b has a smallest element, Assume for a contradiction, we instead have B does not have a smallest element. In other words, we are assuming that the negation of this statement is true. And the negation of this statement is to say, for all D in B, there exists an element C in B such that C is less than D. In other words, if you give me any element of B, then I guarantee you that I can find an element in B smaller than it. Now, with this assumption, we must have that 1 is not an element of B. Because what happens if 1 is an element of B? Well, since we're assuming B does not have a smallest element, this means we're saying that this statement is true. And this statement works for every element of B. So in particular, it must work for 1. So taking d to be 1, we have that there exists an element c in b such that c is less than 1. And let's remind ourselves that b is a subset of the positive integers. So c is a positive integer that is less than 1. But this clearly isn't possible because 1 is the smallest positive integer, right? There is no positive integer less than 1. So we can't have that 1 is an element of b. We must instead have 1 is not an element of b. So now we consider the following set. We consider the set S, which is the set of positive integers n, with the property that every element of b is bigger than n. The claim is that we can use induction to show that S is equal to the set of positive integers. So let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to show that 1 is an element of s. Now, to show that 1 is an element of s, well, if we take n to be 1, this means we want to show for all b and b, b is greater than 1. And to prove that, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of b. I'll call it b. Now, we know that b is a subset of the positive integers, so that tells us b is a positive integer. And since 1 is the smallest positive integer, we have that b is greater than or equal to 1. However, we also know that b is an element of b, and 1 is not an element of b. So that tells us b cannot be equal to 1. So, since b is greater than or equal to 1, and b is not equal to 1, that tells us b is strictly greater than 1. So now we see if b is any element of b, then b is greater than 1. So we've proven this statement. And that tells us 1 is an element of s. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step, where we prove this statement. In the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer n, and we suppose n is an element of s.
From here, the whole goal is to show that n plus 1 is an L of s. Now since we're saying n is an L of s, this means that n is a positive integer with the property that every element of b is greater than n. Now to show that n plus 1 is an L of s, well, what does that mean? Well, if we take n to be n plus 1, then this means we want to show that every element of b is greater than n plus 1. And to prove that, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of b. We'll call it b. And from here, we want to show that b is greater than n plus 1. And to show that, assume for a contradiction, we instead have b is less than or equal to n plus 1. Now, since b does not have a smallest element, this means we are saying that this statement is true. This statement works for every element in b. So in particular, it must work for little b. So taking d to be little b, we have that there exists an element c in b such that c is less than little b. And since c is less than b, and b is less than or equal to n plus 1, well, these two inequalities imply c is strictly less than n plus 1. But remember, every element of b is greater than n. So, c must be greater than n. But then we're going to apply this result. So let me call this result star. And by star, since c is greater than n, that implies c is greater than or equal to n plus 1. But this contradicts the fact that c is less than n plus 1. Our assumption that b is less than or equal to n plus 1 led us to a contradiction. So we must instead have that b is greater than n plus 1. So we have shown if b is any element of b, then b is greater than n plus 1. So we've proven this statement, and therefore we can say that n plus 1 is an element of s. And that was the whole goal of the induction step. So this completes the induction step. Because we've completed both the base case and the induction step, this closes the induction. So by mathematical induction, we have shown that s is equal to the set of positive integers. So now let's remind ourselves of where we're at. We have assumed for a contradiction, b does not have a smallest element. From there, that implied one is not an element of b. And from there, we considered the following set s, and we have shown through induction, s is equal to the set of positive integers. So we're still in the position where we are trying to reach a contradiction from this assumption that b does not have a smallest element. And to reach a contradiction, let's use the fact that b is non-empty. Since b is non-empty, this means that we can find at least one element in b. So let's choose an element in b, I'll call it y. But remember, b is a subset of the positive integers, and the set of positive integers is equal to s. So this tells us that y is an element of s. And since y is an element of s, well, what does that mean? Well, if we take n to be y, we have that every element of b is bigger than y. So since every element of b is greater than y, well then in particular, y is greater than y. But that's absurd, because y is equal to y. So we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption that b does not have a smallest element led us to a contradiction, so we must instead have that b does have a smallest element. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.